Let's look at these three companies. TCS, ROC of around 64.6%. HUL, ROC around 28% and LNT around 13 to 14%. They are all big and profitable companies. But they operate in very different manners and their ROCEs reflect that. So as an investor, how to make sense of ROCE and most importantly, how do you interpret it to make better investment decisions? Let me break it down for you. Let's start with a simple example. You start a business with your friend. Each one of you puts in 1 lakh rupees. But that seems insufficient. So you borrow another 2 lakh rupees from let's say your parents. Your total capital now becomes 4 lakh rupees. At the end of the year, your business makes a 40,000 profit before interest and tax. Now let's calculate ROC. It will be profit before interest and tax, that is PBIT, that in your case would be 40,000 rupees, divided capital employed, which is 4 lakh, which comes out to be 10%. This means for every 100 rupee invested, the business is generating 10 rupees. That's your return on capital employed. Now let's look at the companies we mentioned earlier and understand the nuances of ROC. First, let's look at TCS. TCS has an ROC of 64.6%, which means it earns 64.6 rupees for every 100 rupees of capital employed. On the surface, its strong ROC reflects efficient use of capital and you can see the returns it has delivered over the years. But how TCS is able to generate such a higher ROC? The answer lies in its business model. It's an asset light business. Doesn't need any factories or plants or machinery, just people. In service businesses like TCS, capital needs are lower. That allows them to convert every rupee of capital into profit far more efficiently. That gives them a higher ROC. So one thing is clear, ROC is fairly straightforward. Lower the capital requirement in a business, higher the ROC and vice versa. Next, let's look at HUL. Its ROC is around 27.8%, which means for every 100 rupee it invests in its business, it earns about 27.8 in profit before interest and tax. Now that's pretty solid. But if you compare it with TCS, you'll notice HUL's number look relatively lower. Why? Because HUL needs to invest heavily in plants, machinery and distribution. It's a more capital intensive business. So the takeaway is ROC should be compared within the same industry, not across very different ones. It's less about who's better and more about how efficiently each company uses capital in its own business model. Another great example is LNT. LNT's ROC is around 13 to 14%, which means for every 100 rupee it invests in business, it earns about 13 to 14 rupees of profit before interest and tax. Now that might seem low compared to companies like HUL or TCS, but we need to understand that LNT operates in the engineering and construction space, a highly capital intensive sector that requires massive upfront investment in equipment, infrastructure projects and working capital. So a 13 to 14% ROC for a company like LNT is actually quite reasonable given the heavy asset base and the scale of operations involved. Now here's another thing that most investors miss. You shouldn't just look at ROC in isolation. You have to compare it with the company's cost of capital, which is basically how much it costs them to borrow money or raise equity. If ROC is lower than the cost of capital, the company is actually destroying value. That means even though they are earning profits, they are not generating enough returns to justify money they have used. But if ROC stays higher than the cost of capital for years, that is what you call value creation. It shows the company is not just growing, but it's making money in a way that actually benefits shareholders. So to wrap it up, ROC tells you how efficiently a company is using its capital to generate profits. A high ROC means the business is capital efficient, but that number only makes sense when compared within the same industry and alongside the company's cost of capital. That's how you separate value creators from value destroyers. But here's the thing, efficiency is just one side of the story. The market doesn't just look at how well a company uses capital. It also cares about how much investors are willing to pay for those earnings. That's where valuation metrics like price to earnings ratio come in. A company with a ROC and a reasonable PE usually signals both operational strength and sensible valuation. That's where long-term wealth is created. But if ROC is falling or PE is stretched, it's a warning sign. 
Either the business is losing efficiency or the market's expectations have run ahead of reality. If you want to understand PE better, here's the video where we have covered it in its full light. As an investor, your job is to find balanced businesses that not only earn high returns on capital, but are also available at prices that make sense. That's where dual compounding begins. We'll be decoding more such metrics in the upcoming videos, so that when you look at them, you just not only look at the numbers, but also the meaning, story and context behind them. Which one do you think we should pick next? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one. Let me break. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Eight second. <coughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.